at it. So, less than two segments, Bob. Really? That's it? Less than two segments. The first time I turn on Raw in two months, and I, I, I made it to where they announced that it was going to be uh, Elias and Lashley against The Miz and Roman, and I didn't care, and I still don't care, and I asked myself, why do I bother? Be- because uh, you need that Viking experience? Oh, Jesus. We haven't, we haven't been live. Speaking of which, boom, we're here. Uh, what's up, everybody? Travis, Brother Bob, good morning, good evening, uh, depending on when and where you're listening. Uh, we are here, and it's been a little bit of a hiatus, and some of that is personal stuff and work and whatnot. We we, we really got to knuckle down. We've got some exciting news. You know, it's uh, it's Tuesday evening. We're going to be getting some exciting AEW news tomorrow from the uh, Turner up front. Looking so that'll forward be, to that. Uh, yeah, looking forward to that because God knows there's nothing really else to watch right now. Well. Uh, <laughs> oh, R- R- Ring of Honor has been good. I've been I, highly I, enjoying it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and I'm catching up. I've got three episodes of MLW to cap- catch up on. Uh, you know, I, I like kind of like some of the stuff that's going on there. Impact's actually not awful. Uh, I It's kind of gone more in that Lucha Underground overproduced, like, Hollywood direction, which I, I've said... Not my taste. It's not uh-huh. bad, just not for me. Um, Ring of Honor, New Japan's always that, but Ring of Honor's in this weird spot where they've got to really rebuild that roster. Uh, I mean, they've got a lot of raw talent there, a couple of top guys, and but they need to really retool uh, the storylines and stuff compared to where they were a handful of years ago. Um, so it, it's definitely it's an interesting time, but I mean, really... The WWE product is a joke, and that kind of leads into what we're going to talk about primarily tonight. I know there's a ton of other news. We're going to hit on some of that. I think we're going to save a lot of the Double or Nothing stuff and StarCast stuff for next week uh, and leading into the show. But there really is – I have been an ardent defender for a really long time that – we have not seen the worst Raws ever. We, we, we see that conversation a lot. People will be like, worst Raw ever. And I'm like, no, nah, I remember some of those early 90s Raws when it first started up that were really bad. They were really, really bad. Mm-hmm. But, but I have to say, I, I feel, giving, given the context of the show and the context of that show, we are now in the worst era ever for televised wwe product well one of the problems uh when comparing the older raws and and the current product uh with how bad they are is the other older product was bad but they were they're running hour-long raw episodes a lot of the time in the older product where now you're running three hour plus raw episodes both of which are bad now you're just like tripling the length Hell, well, hell, they even had some uh, that they would run uh, that were like under an hour because of like Westminster Dog Show and stuff. So they'd have certain some of those really bad raws would come in at under an hour, and and now so, we're hitting over three. It's just it it extends the pain. So let let me break down a little bit of why I'm saying that, and why we have started to draw comparisons of this product to WCW 2000, and which is arguably the worst year of wrestling television any company has ever done okay like it was it was a unmitigated disaster and we're going to talk specifically tonight about what happened in 2000 in WCW to make it an unmitigated disaster and how it parallels with what's going on right now in WWE Okay. Because not nearly like, enough people are talking about it. Like I haven't no. heard hardly anybody even bring up WCW in comparing WWE and its current status. And the more I looked into it and and had that thought, the more um, you know, historical records back that up. The more finances back that up. And uh, 
yeah, it's um, it's definitely a lot of parallels there. Now, now there are there are some very big differences. I think. Let, let actually, let, let's let's start there. Let's start with the major differences between WCW 2000 and today's product. Okay, uh, one WWE and going back to WWF has been a financially successful com- company for a very long time. Yep, and and not just financially successful they're the only game in town Mm. okay they are they are great at what they do and that is make tv shows you you know every week i'm not saying the product's good that's not i'm saying you can count on every week as a, a, a a tv station they're going to give you Three hours of product, fifty-two weeks a year. Yep. Okay. They 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 have excelled at that. And another they, and, and another difference in um in between the two, which plays into that WWE buying, being financially successful for such a long time, is um WCW didn't have where WCW was owned by the company that owned their TV. Uh, WWE is being paid by companies to do TV. And WWE had this huge Saudi Arabia contract, which WCW did not have right. access to. So there's there's a lot of other income sources for WWE the, that WCW did not have at the time. So the business is yes, the financial structure of the business is is completely different than it was, uh, you know, 18 years ago. It it just 19 years ago. It just is. Uh, the majority, even WWE back then, the majority of WWE's money was made off of pay per views and house shows. Well into the 2000s, okay, uh, the big money TV contracts didn't really start happening until the last, really, what, five years? Like, the last set of contracts, I uh, well, I guess when when Spike got into a bidding war with USA. Yep. Um, and even then, like, that's when the money started to inflate, but it was nothing compared to these half a billion dollar deals that WWE has signed for both of its two flagship shows okay yeah so the, i mean the, a lot of people don't remember that wwe the the amount they were paying wwe prior to going to tnn slash spike um six million. was was less than what they were paying the westminster dog show which is why wwe would be preempted by the dog show because that dog show had a bigger contract than wwe at the time and uh they had more concessions in their contract which is why you'd often see wwe programming um you know pushed off by the dog show itself before they uh, renegotiated to come back uh, after that TNN deal, so. I, I believe the number was six million. For some mm-hmm. reason, I think it was six million annually. USA was paying the WWE for for Raw, uh, and you know, six million is still it's six million. But when you're talking to these contracts nowadays, that's that's a pittance. It's nothing. That's, you know, they they get more than that for the the Saudi Arabia show. Yep. So, are we saying? that WWE is in danger of going out of business or losing money. No, they're not in that position yet. However, creatively and with their, their television product, there are scary, scary similarities to WCW 2000 and WWE 2018 slash now into 2019 with the booking and the 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 way that the product is handled. Yep. So, Bob, let let me let me ask you a question. And and I I just did the math on this earlier tonight, including vacancies. So anytime the title was vacant, how many title changes were there in WCW in two thousand? Take, just take a more, guess. More than 13, because I know there were 13 title changes in 1999, and in 2000, there were more than that. All right. If you count vacancies, yep. inclu- you know, as, as one, when the title is vacated, there were 25 title changes yep. uh, of the World Heavyweight Championship, which is a lot, mm. okay? It is, it is, that is a lot, and I understand... Nowadays, there's this thought, you know, you can't have a three-year run with a world champion. Yeah. And, and that's probably true. But if you get somebody white hot, we, we saw, you know, we've seen long runs. You can do a year with somebody. Mm. Okay. Um, it, you know, anything less than six months really is, unless it's like specifically you're transitioning to a guy that's going to carry the belt for a year. Why are you doing it? 
Exactly. Uh, I, 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 that's just my opinion. I, I don't know how anybody else feels, but I'm like, eh, you know, short little, you know, 82 day reigns don't really do anything for me. You don't get any character development, which you don't get in the WWE anyway. That's we'll get to that, but let's run down how brutal, uh, the, the world heavyweight championship title changes were in WCW. And this all kind of started with the infamous Bret Hart Goldberg match where Bret Hart was kicked in the head concussed. And that happened in December of 99. Yep. Uh, Brett won the match, but he had to vacate the title in early 2000, in January of 2000, at sold out uh, because, you know, he had to retire. Like that, he was just couldn't wrestle anymore. Mm-hmm. So this led to one of the craziest strings of title reigns and changes in wrestling history. So they put the belt on Chris Jericho at sold out. Benoit. And he, or uh, sorry, Chris Benoit. Yeah, thank you. Yes, J- J- Jericho and Big Show jumped ship in. Uh, yep, you're earlier right. Earlier in '99, I, it, it was just a misspeak. Yeah, yep. Chris Benoit in '99, and it was a one day title reign because then he went to WWE mm. and uh, vacated the title. Yeah, it was so, actually that was actually January of 2000, not '99. Uh, yeah, yes, January of 2000. Yes, excuse, January of 2000 vacated the title. One day reign vacated the title and so in january uh january 24th on nitro sid vicious defeats the harris brothers to face kevin nash Mm -hmm. he then defeats kevin nash and has a two-day title reign yep a two-day title reign whereupon he is stripped by heel commissioner kevin nash because he pinned the wrong or beat the wrong Harris brother, the non-legal Harris brother. Yep. And and so Kevin Nash awards himself the World Heavyweight Championship. This all happens on Thunder. Like, the, the decks... Uh, and you are already have had, like, four title changes in, like, four days. Yeah. It, it's absurd. Uh, so on the same Thunder, they put the strap back on Vicious. Vicious wins in a triangle steel cage match over uh, Nash and Ron Harris. Mm -hmm. So they take it off Sid to put it back on Sid in the same show. To be fair, WCW, um, the the reason they put it back on Sid after Benoit is because WWE had stricken Benoit's title reign from their record books uh, and it wasn't added back in until WWE purchased them. So it was for, it was for continuity sake. Um, you know, the- but I mean, it happened like yeah. it, it's not like this was a house show. No. Nope. Like, why do you put it on Benoit when you like clearly are having problems with him? Well, I mean, it's because and, and here's your here's another comparison to WWE. Uh, it, it's similar to what WWE did with um, the revival. Uh, they they said, hey, you know, uh, Benoit and Guerrero and, and Malenko and Saturn were all upset with the, what was going on in the company. And uh, as an attempt to keep Chris Benoit there, they put the title on him. And then during negotiations the next night, um, you know, something was said that Benoit took offense to. And th- all four guys took off. Um, so, I mean, it's similar to them putting that tag team title belts on the revival and saying, hey, we're going to push you guys. We know you're unhappy. Yes, for your release. Just bear with us. And then uh, putting them into a stupid angle after having them drop the belts in ma- Mania and. Now just have them doing ridiculous comedy shit on uh, Monday Night Raw. Exactly. Yeah. It's 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 absurd. So you 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 have you have Sid gets a nice two and a half month title run until April tenth when Vince Russo and Eric Bischoff strip all the titles yep. and reboot WCW. Okay. Something- that sounds a bit similar to a superstar shakeup. At least they didn't take Ooh. everybody's belts away. But yeah, I mean, you know, when when you're like, hey, the product isn't working, and we need to change a bunch of stuff. Um, you know that that was the direction they went. You know, so it, you wind up with Jeff Jarrett six days later at Spring Stampede, uh, beating DDP to win the vacant title, mm-hmm. which which he held. For well, uh, like till the next Nitro, 
uh, and and he lost it back to DDP. So you, you've 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 had all these title changes, and then probably the biggest in my opinion, the biggest travesty in wrestling history, the infamous David Arquette title win yep. ha- happens April 25th on thunder. All right. It, I'm going to play devil's advocate. N- if you've never heard me talk about this or never seen me talk about it on Twitter, I absolutely despise this moment. Okay. Like, but I'm going to play devil's advocate. And, and say, okay, let's say it was a good idea to put the title on David Arquette. It wasn't. But let's say it yeah. was. You do it on Thunder? Yeah. Thunder? Thunder? And there was no advertisement going into this again. It's, it's very reminiscent of how WWE books their title matches recently. No, no promotion that, hey, we're doing this to bump our numbers. We're just going to throw it on there at the surprise. You know, because people they, watch they, if they think they're surprises. They tried to hot shot. This is one of those. They tried to hot shot something with a B list Hollywood actor, and they came out with poop on their face. They they came out with more crap than CM Punk post Z Pack SmackDown <laughs> match. Yeah. All right. Like it. This is. I, I truly believe this is one of the like worst on screen moments like we've ever seen in wrestling. It's one of the worst angles and and all the other worst angles and stories are probably in WCW 2000. Well, just wait until we talk to talk about cruiserweight champion Medusa facing Oklahoma. Like we'll get there. Are you kidding me? (laughs) Really? Anyway. So you have, you have Jeff Jarrett win the title back in early May. He holds it for eight days, uh, seven days. Uh, when uh, Ric Flair wins it on Nitro, only to vacate it the next week, which I don't know if you were at this show, Bob. I was there. This was in, in our hometown in Grand Rapids. Vince Russo strips the title of Ric Flair, and uh, and then Jeff Jarrett wins it back. Um it's a big schmoz. It's vintage Vince Russo. Mm-hmm. It's everything that was wrong with wrestling. And I distinctly remember going to this show. I went to this show and I walked out and I was like, wow, I really don't have a reason to watch WCW anymore. Yeah. And I did. This was during the time Goldberg want. was injured too, was it not? Um, they, they had a lot of injuries. And that's another thing that comparing it to today's WC or WWF or, or WWE roster. Um, Right now, WWE's roster is fairly healthy. Yep, it's on an upswing, but you had a lot of people injured at the turn of the year and into the beginning of the year, and they've gotten healthy again, thankfully. Mm-hmm. But WCW, and you've got more information on this. Uh, they had a incredibly b- bloated roster. Yeah, uh, not as and- bloated as the WWE's currently is, however. There um, it is. Yeah. Um, so. I have uh, I've, I've managed to find some court records from the year 2000 when WCW was in a, a lawsuit where they had to uh, release their uh, information. And in 1999, they had 157 wrestlers under contract that were making over $10,000. And then in 2000, they had 124 wrestlers under contract making over $10,000. Um, comparison total wrestlers under contract in wwe this doesn't include commentators or anybody in the actual developmental program this includes uh raw smackdown 205 live um and the nxt brand they have 205 wrestlers under contract currently um like their their numbers are far more bloated than what wcw's are but with that roster again another comparison being that right now WWE has guys like Kevin Owens, former Ring of Honor champion, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura, former IWGP champion, uh, EC3, former TNA champion, Eric Young, former TNA champion, Robert Roode, former TNA champion. Um, They have all these guys who came over from other companies who were top guys in those other companies, and a lot of them they're not doing anything with. In 2000, WCW had guys like Mike Awesome, who was an ECW champion, they weren't doing anything with. They had uh, 
guys like Lance Storm, who they gave a, a fantastic run with the United States title, but he wasn't in the world title picture at all. He was he's a he's a former top guy in ECW as well. Um, and it, it seemed like they had a ton of guys who they were trying to groom these young guys they brought up out of their power plant who weren't getting any kind of pushes. And instead they were giving those pushes to guys like you mentioned, Sid Vicious and Kevin Nash and, um, you know, later Booker T and, and Scott Steiner, guys who've been around, f- you know, for quite a while. Um, Booker T being the only one who never really got a, a big push in the company in a singles way until that time. But, uh, they had just a huge roster of guys who they could have went to but didn't. I mean, you look at this, they were still paying Roddy Piper in uh, 2000. They were still paying Kurt Hennig in 2000. They were still paying freaking X-Pac was still getting like royalty fees in 2000 from WCW. Uh, they had, they were still paying Chris Benoit, even though he was in WWE. Um, they were paying... I'm trying to find some of these other older guys here. Mike Rotunda was still, you know, uh, part of the roster being paid. Um, Let's see. Who else? Shane Douglas. Jeff Farmer. And then you get a lot lot of of bad contracts. Ice Train. um, Ultimo Dragon. Bobby Walker. I mean, there's all these guys who weren't being used. And then you have a lot of these young talents and people don't even know some of these guys were in WCW. You have AJ Styles. You have Christopher Daniels. You have Christian York. You have freaking like all these all these guys who became the Shark Boy at one point was under contract in 99 and 2000. I mean, there are guys who WCW had, you know, put under contract and just never used in any meaningful way in their company. Similar to what WWE is doing now with guys like EC3 and Eric Young. So they they had a slew of bad contracts, and on top of a slew of bad contracts, uh, they had a lot of talent that was not getting used. And while WWE doesn't necessarily have the glut of bad contracts WCW has, if the report is true, and the report was from a couple of couple of sources, anybody whose contract who's coming due, except for the top tier guys. Vince is basically offering double for them to just Mm re-sign to keep them under contract and keep them away from the competition. That is how you get to bad contracts. Absolutely. Is when and uh, if you go listen to Jr's interview on, I believe it was Busted Open. He talked a little bit about wanting to bring in a guy for you know he's a in his early thirties. I believe we talked about this on the last podcast, but early thirties established guy good worker but he's not on tv in the wwe at all the wwe is doing nothing with him so he was like hey this would be a great guy to work with the young guys they have at AEW and help them with their game and get them up to snuff with the tv he'll he'll work with them he's super safe all the things he's he's that ring vet that can come in and be like a lower mid card guy enhancement guy for your top talent and and be a real locker room presence a workhorse you know the the type of thing that the territories used to have and Mm -hmm. and jr kind of reached out to him and found out he was making half a million dollars a year to basically not be on tv and God bless, like, make your money, kid. But if you've got guys that aren't even on TV making a half a million dollars, that that that's starting to smell like bad contracts to me. Yep. And, yes, you've got half a billion dollar TV deals, but there's already rumblings that if if Fox doesn't see the rating on, on uh, SmackDown that they like in the first 90 days, they're going to cancel that contract because they got it out. Yep. There, there, there's a minimum rating requirement, and if 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 WWE doesn't produce, they will void that contract. And I, if you see that happen, uh, who knows what's going to happen? Because the stock will. This is the problem with being a publicly traded company. The stock will crater. You know, uh, it'll send shock waves through the company. And it'll be interesting to see what direction that goes in. But we are getting to the point of bad contracts. Yes. We are already at the point of bloated roster to 
kind of go back to the championships and the title changes. Uh, you know, it took them one of the greatest moments in wrestling hi- history happened at Bash at the Beach 96, the Hollywood Hogan, you know, Hulk Hogan heel turn to Hollywood, joining the NWO, the leg drop, uh, the promo after even he, Hulk even botched that promo. And it's still one of the greatest moments in, it, you know, it's it's new, probably new the world gr- organization. Or wrestling yeah, the brother. New, the, yeah, the new world organization of wrestling brother. Uh, but it, it's still, it's one of the most iconic moments in wrestling history. It took them four years to go a uh, complete 180 and mm-hmm. give you one of the worst moments in wrestling history. Bash at the Beach 2000. You had a slew of title changes between where we left off and now, but Jeff Jarrett's got the belt. Hogan exercises creative control. Russo makes Jarrett go down and lay down in the ring. Hogan pins him. Anarchy breaks out. Vince Russo does the the only meaningful. His promo was fire. Like he was all fired up. It's probably the best thing Vince Russo ever did. It's the one bright spot of the entire show. But they strip Hogan. They say it's the the Hogan bell, and then you get Booker T and Jeff Jarrett. Booker T wins the title. You know, kudos Booker T. Uh, a very underrated guy to that point. He is a guy who clearly could work the main event. And it was nice to see him get the title run and the title yes, shot. Absolutely. Uh, that that's a bright spot, but the booking and the like to get to this point is a joke. No. It's an absolute joke. You, you mentioned Hulk Hogan uh in a title picture, a big match at a big important pay-per-view for WCW in 1999. I can't help but think about, you know, how The Undertaker was just re-signed to appear in a big pay-per-view, important pay-per-view for WWE in 2019. And the similarity there with the fact that, uh, I mean, Hogan wasn't working full-time either. Um, You know, the, the reliance of WCW on... You know, guys like Hogan and, you know, guys like Nash and Sid that we talked about, these, these older guys, and where we're looking at this super show coming up in Saudi Arabia and the big matches being announced being Goldberg versus Undertaker, Triple H versus Randy Orton, um, those uh, those aren't relying or pushing new talent or using anything else on your roster. This is relying on stuff that was... Um, key and prime like 10 years ago this is like 2009 or before kind of wrestlers not 2019 kind of wrestlers so let's let's talk a little bit about the difference though to be fair to play a little devil's advocate and uh and kind of counterbalance that yes there are some similarities the differences are it seems that the saudi sports authority and mbs and that God awful regime over there has a lot of say in what gets actually put on at that show. Mm -hmm. They are, they are paying oodles and oodles and oodles of money. Uh, the, the earnings report from the last show crown jewel guesstimates. I mean, you don't know if it's the entire, but you look at the breakdown of the earnings report and there's the other category. A lot of people, assume that most if not all of that is coming from crown jewel it was uh like 42 million it was just over 40 million mm-hmm. for one show yeah that was that's what they so if if the saudis are cutting that kind of a check uh i don't and again i'm not watching that show i didn't watch crown jewel i didn't watch the first super show like i watched bits of the first super show to be fair well the first su- the first super show was actually australia um it was uh greatest well, the, royal rumble and yeah, then well, the, crown jewel me. well whatever the first saudi show was yeah uh, the greatest royal rumble. I, I watched some of the bits on youtube but things hadn't escalated uh, uh khashoggi hadn't happened things like that and a- after that i did not watch crown jewel at all yep uh i looked at the results on wikipedia that's that's it. I'm not going to watch this show. Yep. Uh, you and I active on Twitter uh, at Smartdown Radio at CP Buff 22. We've tweeted about it quite a bit. 
Um, I'm very firm in my stance. I, I am anti Saudi Arabia. Uh, they're they're crucifying and beheading people for being you know gay. Uh, for for they, there was a there was a 21 year old kid who when he was convicted quote unquote convicted was like 17. Uh, he was tortured and signed a confession because they tortured him. His grievous crime against the kingdom was uh, he sent a a uh, chat message on some chat program uh, telling another person when and where one of the anti-government protests were not supporting it. Not, not, uh, not, you know, being like, Oh, we need to go here. Somebody asked him and he was like, yeah, it's here. It's at this time. It's at this place. He was arrested, tortured, finally signed a confession and was beheaded last month. Yep for at 22 uh so you know saudi arabia is a horrible horrible heinous dictatorship with brutal human rights violations uh it it were and not to not to get too deep into politics here um because that's a whole nother podcast but for everybody who comes out and says we need to get rid of trump he's a fascist for everybody who says we need to stop russia that that's a fascist regime Everybody who says we need to go into Venezuela because this fascism, Saudi Arabia, the, the, what Travis just described, you know, torturing and then killing somebody for sharing information about a rally that is uh, against the leader of the country, that is fascism. Denying people the ability to assemble and freely speak is fascism. So for anybody, anybody who is like, oh, this Saudi Arabia thing, it's not that big of a deal. And, you know, anybody who says they're going to boycott is just full of crap. And then, you know, is all worked up over Trump or Russia or Venezuela. The definition of fascism is what Travis just described. So keep that in mind. Well, look, you know, I, I have no I have no problem. Saying, like, there's a lot of we can disagree a lot about what's going on politically here in this country. It happens every day. We are incredibly polarized, uh, and and people argue and throw around terms like fascism and and all like you know dictator and this and that as it relates to our political situation mm-hmm. here in the U.S. And that's because uh, the 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 mass of population the majority of americans have never seen or experienced that sort of thing in their lifetime you know uh the last i mean the last real vestiges that we faced were you know world war ii a huge portion of our country went overseas to fight real fascism real evil people so they came back and they saw that they saw what happened over there and they understood it and most of them are gone now uh you know uh, in my lifetime you know i i'm i'm turned 40 this year Mm -hmm. so i remember as a kid i remember the soviet union and i remember you know, the, the boogie, they were the big bad boogeyman, but it was a cold war. And then I watched the Berlin wall fall on TV and all these things. And, you know, we, we beat it. Yay. So younger people really don't, you know, they, they experience some of it. They've experienced, uh, terror attacks and violence domestically. And, but we haven't really as a country f- like faced evil and some of the stuff that these other countries like we take it for granted a lot of people don't understand you could just be snatched up off the street look at what they did to Khashoggi they lured him to an embassy they sent a hit squad after him killed him and dismembered him trying to hide the evidence okay that if, if we can agree on nothing else can we please agree that Saudi Arabia's leaders and again there are Innocent people that are just trying to live their lives over there, I'm sure, yes. I'm not 
But that them as a country, Saudi Arabia as a country, as a kingdom, as as their leadership, the people in power, there's some evil, evil people. Okay, can we at least Absolutely. get on that? Get on that page, like. And WWE, to bring it back full circle, is taking millions and millions of dollars to do shows over there mm-hmm. because it's millions and millions of dollars. Yep. And and I mean, it wouldn't it wouldn't even be as big of an issue if they were just you know if if they weren't involved with these charitable organizations. They weren't pushing this non-bullying attitude. They they weren't they weren't you know um, involved in um, you know tr- troop tribute events and stuff here in the U.S. They didn't do all of these things that are supposed to be charitable for uh, the U.S. and try to put out this message of um, of uh, anti uh, anti bullying, anti uh, ang- you know. You know, take mental health care, uh, pro pro, um, you know, LGBTQ, pro women's rights. They put out all these these um, advertisements and all these charitable donations and things to uh, gain, you know, uh, viewership um, and gain, you know, advertising by doing so. And then they, you know, throw you know throw all that right away and go over to Saudi Arabia, which is against all those things. And they still want to hold that moral high ground of, well, we donated to, you know, X, Y, and Z. Uh, the problem there is, uh, you know, you can you can say something like that, but as soon as you as soon as you go and start taking money from some place that is against all of those values that you say you represent, uh, you're a hypocrite, and you know you can, you can no longer hold that moral high ground. You you see the biggest example of this, you know, the WWE Women's Revolution. Right. Mm -hmm. We're we're in the midst or, you know, well entrenched in the what has become the women's revolution. And they're going to a place that still brutally oppresses women. Yep. That is the height of hypocrisy. Like, well, I mean, the the top the top star in WB right now, um, according to Vince McMahon from recent. um uh, recent meetings uh, is Becky Lynch. He's said that Becky Lynch is their top star. That he, you know, that and she's apparently going to be the cover of the cover girl for their WWE game that comes out this year. Uh, it looks like everything's Becky two belts. And to have the top wrestler in your company, the face of your company at this point, be a woman, and then go somewhere where women are treated that way. Uh, can't wrestle. Yeah, she can't. She can't wrestle. Yep, by law. Yep, yep. It's... So let's let's kind of pull it back in because anytime yeah. we get on Saudi Arabia, Bob, we you and I will just uh, you know we'll go go on and on and on and on about that. So um, other absurdity in the title picture uh, in September, and again you had a slew of title changes in September of uh, of 2000 on a Nitro. You have Vince Russo winning the the WCW World Championship in a steel cage mm. match, and then finally you kind of get it to uh, you get it on Booker T and and you go Booker T to Scott Steiner. Scott Steiner kind of closes it out and has a little bit of a run before the final show, uh, where Booker Booker T wins the championship, and um, it 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 is it it really is a. It is a sad affair. It is to see that belt treated with such disregard and uh, just unimportance. Yeah. And that is a direct parallel to the way belts are treated in the WWE today. Th- thankfully, they haven't done that with their world titles at this point. Um, nothing nothing comparable. Um I think the opposite issue, WWE kind of has the exact opposite problem where with WCW, they are cha- we're changing belts multiple times in a month, sometimes multiple times in a week. Um, WWE has belts you just don't see for months. Uh, you know, Universal title was one when, when Brock had it. And then, um, you know, like your US title and IC title kind of had been lost in the picture. Um, you know, the, the tag team titles. 
uh, and on SmackDown kind of got, you know, they broke up all these tag teams and they, they didn't really know what they were going to do with those. Um, thank God for Daniel Bryan and, uh, and, uh, uh, Rowan. Um, but I mean, it, it's, it's, you know, they, they devalue the title in a different way, but, uh, I mean, it's, it's equally as big of a problem. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an issue because the titles could, uh, be used to elevate, and it can be used, and, and I think we'll see this in AEW. The the championships are all going to be supremely important, and guys are going to be clamoring for title shots, uh, and it's it's going to be a big part of what we see over there, uh, especially with the competitive angle that they're talking about taking. Some other low lights from WCW 2000. We mentioned the uh, Medusa. Uh, uh, Oklahoma feud. Yeah, I, I, Oklahoma is a gimmick completely. Like, I I, under, I understand. Like, it was there. You know, that was really they were scrambling. This is WWF was really on the upswing at this point. They were consistently beating WCW, and they were really trying to do anything. But th- it was just a a joke. Uh, you had. Uh, Tank Abbott literally tried to kill somebody yep. at Super Brawl 10. He tried to literally kill Big Al, uh, like it, like the in a shoot, like just got mad at him, I guess, and just tried to shoot on him. Um, just the absurdity of the the booking, the uh, the terrible rebranding with the new blood when all of them were in their mid thirties. <laughs> Like the new blood, they're all in their mid thirties. Are you are you kidding me? Uh, you know. Well, so um, so you you've mentioned some terrible gimmicks on people who maybe weren't great wrestlers. I mean, obviously, you know, Oklahoma. Um, you know, so so I mean, you're mentioning some stuff here. I I can't help but think about people who were really good wrestlers who were getting settled with just terrible gimmicks and terrible and, and terrible writing ideas. Uh, the fat chick thriller mike awesome aka that 70s guy mike awesome um you know that that was terrible how about how about janitor hacksaw jim duggan or what what about when uh sting got lit on fire and thrown off the titan tron you know um what about you know i mean they had great muda over there you know teaming up with freaking the kiss demon um you know you you had legendary wrestlers you had champions from other companies brought in and just given stupid, terrible, terrible gimmicks. I mean, hell, the, the, even their young guys they bring in, as a, new, a new tag team that's supposed to freshen up the, the tag team division of uh, Air Paris and AJ Styles, they make them fighter pilots and call them Air Raid and have them come up in fighter pilot gear. I mean, this sounds very similar to what WWE is doing with Bray Wyatt having, you know, the Firefly uh, Clubhouse and the Viking Experience, the, the new young the tag team. Yeah, uh, we haven't we haven't talked about we haven't done a show since the Viking Experience. No. I like that was kind of the straw that broke. Like I was I was like at least following Raw to that point, but when they changed the tag team's name, what three or four times in in two weeks? In like yeah, like a week or so. It, yeah. it was just absurd. Yep. Uh, let's not also forget you talked about all these bad gimmicks, but just again, just sheerly bad booking. Mm-hmm. The most over babyface in your company, Goldberg. Okay. It, clearly he the streak and he was electric and magnetic and just on on fire and he had a little bit of you know the bret hart thing put a damper on it but uh sounds like they should turn him heel well, well <laughs> you know yeah why not yeah. Let, so how do, let's turn the big yeah you know, and he was not ready to turn heel yep. and not only do you turn him heel you turn him heel in a story that doesn't really make any sense and in a brutal way, uh, they, they have him beat hacksaw Jim Duggan and then pound his kidneys. And this is, you know, post Duggan's return from kidney cancer. Yep. Like, yeah, it's a great, it's in, in theory, I love that idea as a heel turn, 
But don't do it with Goldberg. Yeah. Like, don't do it with Goldberg. Like, he's your money ticket. He's the he's the one guy that probably can still draw money on that roster, and you just made him probably the most unlikable person in the world because everyone liked Hacksaw. Yeah, it's almost, you know, be as bad as trying to turn Becky uh, Lynch heel against Charlotte. Oh, oh, wait, the WWE did that last year. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's... It's very, very funny how similar some of this stuff is. Um, and, and you know, and that was just the other, so their other top baby face, right? So you got you got Goldberg, they're going to turn heel. And then their other top baby face in 2000 was Booker T. And for a while, he joined the Misfits in Action and was going by the name G.I. Bro. Yeah, G.I. Bro. So, I mean, it's, it's this terrible idea of needing some kind of ridiculous gimmick. Um and we're, we're we're seeing the same thing happening here with with WWE. I'm I mean, they they added a ricochet sounds to ricochet's entrance music. Um, you know, just just uh, they get they got this whole um, Viking and you know thing going on. Uh, Bray Wyatt's a, a a creepy it knockoff that does a children's TV show now. Uh, you know, it's just all of it is just ridiculous and. Instead of focusing on the athleticism and the legit like guys who are legit world champions elsewhere, you know they're they're coming up with these crazy gimmicks and uh, it's not it's not helping their their viewership. Well, just look at EC3. Uh, I, I saw a uh, report. He was on what's the pre-tape before uh, SmackDown? Is it main event or yeah, superstars? Like yeah, one of those one shows. Of those shows. Uh, he he lost to. Oh, one of the 205 Live guys. Is it? I don't remember. I'm sorry. I'm blanking on who. Uh, like, that was last week or the week before. They had him job to one of the 205 Live guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Like, and this is a guy, you look at him, and he looks like a Vince guy. He's yeah. got everything Vince likes, and he can talk, but they won't let him talk. And, I, I mean, he's not... He's not AJ in the ring, but he's 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 also you know not I don't I, he's not some scrub yeah. like he he's had really top tier quality matches in Impact and these WWE fans that just want to dismiss Impact it's like do you guys not realize that like a huge portion of the people that were getting pushes and tv time in the last 18 months have been from impact yep. like well and you know and you you hear who the the new guy wwe is going wants to go after is right i i honestly have not eli drake eli drake's in the top of their list of guys they want to bring in they said they uh, they like his look and how he talks and i'm like uh, and you haven't done nothing with ec3 really i i wouldn't you couldn't get me you couldn't, well, you could pay. If I was a wrestler, it would take extraordinary means. They would have to offer just an absurd contract mm-hmm. to get me to go to WWE because it is really the wasteland right now for talent. And, I mean, I I just, I don't know how they get out of this. Uh, you know, the other thing that was being circulated around was when people were, people were, commenting everybody everybody says the attitude era was awesome but when some attitude era stuff happens you all complain in reference to the revival and the you know flaming bits yeah uh that was everything that was wrong and having we we both were we lived through the attitude era we don't wax poetic we were there we got to see it and for Mm -hmm. as much awesome that came out of it there there's plenty of good stuff to talk about the Attitude Era. There's so many good things. It was all at the top of that card. Yep. All of it. Uh, the mid card was an absolute train wreck. I mean, but cho- you choppy, can't, choppy, can't choppy, deny his PP was terrible. <laughs> choppy, cho- okay, let's look I mean, at some of sexual the sexual chocolate and um and China setting sexual chocolate up with a transgendered woman for sex to, you know, get him. That was terrible. Um, uh, but Katie Vick. <laughs> Katie Vick, terrible. Um, Lita, uh, Kane, Kane rapes Lita, and then Lita, like, 
ghost Kane for her protector and has the baby and then Schnitzky and all that. Linda McMahon drugged in a wheelchair where well, Vince has sex with Trish Stratus in front of her. Mm-hmm. Like, let's not act big show and big boss man in the casket getting drugged behind a car. Big boss man feeding Al Snow his dog Pepper. His dog. Like, let's not act like there wasn't a lot of really not good stuff in the ad as as good as stone cold was as good as the rock was yep. as good as taker was as good as the you know angle the moments it generated all the things that we remember f- fondly from the attitude era are pretty much like it's it's stone cold getting over the rock the rock turning face Yep. And getting over everybody. Stone Cold getting over Mr. McMahon, who is one of the greatest heels in wrestling history and relatable on a on so many levels. And, and you know, it's been talked to death. Everyone out there, who doesn't want to get over on their boss and beat up their boss? At some point in your your work career, you've had a boss that you you would just love to take a bedpan and bang it off their skull, yep. right? We got to see that and live vicariously through Stone Cold doing that. That's what people remember about the Attitude Era. They remember Mankind and Undertaker and Undertaker and Kane, and they remember you know Jericho and uh, you know making his giant debut and one of the biggest pops in wrestling history. That's what people remember about the Attitude Era and wax poetically and, you know, oh, the Attitude Era was the greatest thing ever. Mm -hmm. And again, I loved all of that. Mankind winning the title. There's just so many things to just be like, it was awesome. But there was as much garbage as there was awesome back then. And what they did is they gave us the worst part of the Attitude Era with the revival and the flame yep. like that. That's the worst part of the attitude era. I don't care about that. I want awesome, compelling stories. I want mega stars who get over. I want the belts to matter. Like I, I want that again. And, mm-hmm. and WWE and it's gotta be Vince. You know, I, I've tried to, with the, I, I, I've tried to like equivocate and be like, well, maybe it's not Vince. Maybe he's not, no, the reports are Vince is still as active as ever. Yep. That's the reason that Road Dog walked off the writing, the creative team, is because he didn't want to work that many hours. They would come in Monday morning, Vince would tear up the script, and they would have to completely write, rewrite a nationally televised three-hour live television product the day of the show. And people wonder why the booking is garbage you wonder why the matches are garbage. The format to the show has remained unchanged for almost twenty years. Now, now let's twenty years. Now let's uh, let's do another comparison here between WWE and WCW. Since you brought up uh, the writing team changes and the, and the rewriting of uh, scripts the day of, um, WCW had brought in Vince Russo, um, fired Vince Russo. Brought in Eric Bischoff, within three months rehired Vince Russo to work with Eric Bischoff. You know, you're you're looking at you know all this happening, and this isn't just like your low level writers; these are your your top guys. So so this is a is a a very apt comparison to WWE's like rotating uh, new new writers in, and and so many writers wanting to leave, and the rewriting the day of the show. Vince Russo has has mentioned that part of the reason that he got fed up and was eventually you know let go was that he would come in and they would have to rewrite on a on a a, when, uh, a Friday after Thunder they would have to rewrite something before the pay per view because somebody decided they wanted to change something one of the bookers changed and they wanted stuff changed so the writer would come in and rewrite it they do the pay per view at the pay per view. Uh, the booker would decide they were going to put somebody different, a couple different people over, and change the finishes. So the writers would have to rewrite the script for Monday and and for Thursday because they were going to be different champions. So they'd rewrite the script for Monday on late Sunday night, early Monday morning, try to get it done in time for the show. 
Then Monday night, they'd rewrite the script for Thursday. And then, oftentimes, they'd have that script done on Tuesday. So, come thir- come Wednesday, they'd change things again, and the writers would have to rewrite the script on Wednesday night for Thursday. So Very Bob, similar I'm gonna, thing. I'm going to stop you because there's... Um, there's a really good shoot video that people, if they want to understand how insane it was uh, to write, book, whatever, WCW uh, in 99, 2000, go watch, I believe it's Kayfabe Commentaries. It's with Kevin Nash. And I, if you YouTube search, it's uh, Kevin Nash booking WCW Thunder. I think it'll come up. It'll be there, but it's a kayfabe commentaries video. And he uses a whiteboard to try and explain the booking process for WCW when they were running Thunder and Nitro. And because Thunder was a pre-tape that was aired on Thursday but taped on Tuesday, they they were running they were running like a week behind on Nitro, and they were re- having to retroactively write like you were talking about. There was just it was just insane, and anytime there was an injury or somebody couldn't make it or whatever, anything that happened, they would have to go back and not rewrite one TV. They would have to go back and rewrite like several TVs in a day. And he does a great job with the whiteboard kind of laying it out for, for you to actually see it's way it's a, uh, and I've watched it and you know, everybody, you watch a shoot video and it's always from the wrestler's perspective. I understand that, but I've never heard this contested by anybody else who was in WCW, like in the, in the front office or doing the booking. I mean, it, this isn't really a contested point. Uh, it wasn't like about like how or why things were booked the way they were. It was about the actual process of booking. And, it, and he did a great, great job of laying out the battle. Uh, when, cause you know, he had the book for a while, the battle it was, being a part of the booking community committee or being the booker at WCW because of the way the TV schedule was. And it it just, when you actually see it on the board and see somebody who was a part of it, explain it, it, it is insane and maddening. Like as, as, as somebody who has planned events, uh, you know, Again, I've talked about that on the show. I've planned, you know, three, 350 person events, conference events, very small, small level conference events. And, you know, my schedule set weeks ahead of time, unless there's a last minute change. I've always got contingency plans and I would never put myself in a position, even running a small convention to have to do changes of that magnitude, let alone a multi-million dollar company doing a live national television show at twice a week or yep. once a week in a tape show. So it, go watch that on YouTube. Just do yourself a favor. Go click over there, find it, watch that video and watch him like lay it out on a whiteboard and you will just be stunned at the idiocy in the front office at WCW. Yep. And I know some people might be thinking, well, Kevin Nash and Vince Russo have been called out numerous times on stories that they've they've told that people, you know, have have said aren't true. But you have to remember, those guys were running the booking and writing at different times, and they both have similar stories of the things they were going through. And uh, you know, you gotta take what you know these guys say sometimes with a grain of salt. But when multiple people who are in that position have the same problem at different times, you kind of have to chalk that up to there being a problem in the system and that it likely is that they're, they're completely being honest with that portion of their story. So, um, you know, the, the part that you always have to take a grain with a grain of salt is when they are, they are, you know, trying to paint themselves maybe in a better light Mm -hmm. or paint somebody in a negative light. And this wasn't Nash really wasn't trying to, you know, uh, trying to like, he was he was saying it was a struggle for everybody. This yeah. wasn't like this was one of those like everybody struggled with this problem and the Turner executives, you know, the Time Warner executives were forcing them to do this oh. and nobody liked it. And I think that's why nobody I and maybe somebody's disputed it, but I've never seen or heard anybody dispute how much of a cluster 
booking WCW was when they were running Nitro and Thunder. I've never heard anybody, yep. uh, talent, bookers, front office, I've never heard anybody contradict that. So I tend to believe when he lays this out and he does so in a very detailed way, um, it, it it's real easy. Like if it was wrong, I think a lot of people would be like, you know, Nash is full of crap. Mm -hmm. But you don't hear that in this case. So just go check it out. Uh, you'll be you'll be like, really? Like that's the dumbest thing. I mean, wow, D dumb, dumb. So Bob, I don't I don't really know what else to say. Like it's it it's a disaster. Well, like it is. We it, it's. We do need to touch on the ratings and the fact that um, you know everybody yep. knows it's a, a record lows, but um, the the recent raw ratings have been hitting numbers that Thunder were hitting in uh, the year you know two thousand. So they're doing they're doing impact numbers. Yeah, they were impact on spike numbers. Yep, that's where they're at, and that impact on spike was was and is considered an unmitigated disaster mm -hmm. so and that's what they're pulling on a weekly basis and i for a really long time especially when we were doing the podcast before we rebooted and and even at the start of the show i'm like you got to take ratings with a grain of salt yep. ratings are down for everything across the board however and the, i've said this in the last few months you can't you know that when when they're trending down this much, there's a problem, and and I'll go and say right now, it's at a point where you can't defend that argument doesn't it doesn't hold water anymore. You cannot defend these ratings. Mm -hmm. The it is a direct correlation to the crap that that this is the problem when you have a seventy something year old guy who likes fart jokes and potty humor, yep, and 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 doesn't view his business as the business it actually is. It is the world wrestling, well, it's world wrestling entertainment. It was the world wrestling federation. It's wrestling Vince. Yeah. It's not, you know, South Park nailed it all those years ago with the WTF where they just have guys come out and talk like the kids come out and do their backyard wrestling federation and it's just all the talk and then somebody gets hit with a steel chair. Yep. Like that's that's what your program has become Vince. It's wrestling. People, I know I know you don't want to hear that. I know and I know he's not going to hear this. I I'm not I'm not naive, but Vince does not want to hear the fact that wrestling is what people actually want to see. Yes, your character, yes, your stars, your wrestlers have to be compelling. Yes, they have to tell a good story. Yes, you need good angles. Yes, you need something to be invested in. But just talking at the fans and then putting the same match on, you know, week in and week out, and the same drivel and the same convoluted feuds that have no real anything behind them you you know the reason the reason people got excited for babyface champions is because babyface champions didn't do freaking jobs to random people on tv yep all right like baron corbin seth rollins i'm looking in your direction Absolutely. like I, yeah. I i heard that happened and i i was like i'm glad i didn't see that i probably would have broke my tv yeah. What the hell do you have your champion losing to what and 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 Baron Corbin? I'm I'm sure he's a perfectly fine guy, but he's got go away heat. I don't want to yep. see him. He's not compelling. Go away. Yeah. And I mean in in there and in 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 Corbin's case is it's 100% that. I mean, so Xbox had, you know, what uh, what for a long time was called Xbox heat um because people, you know, just didn't like him. But even though people didn't like him, he was really talented in ring worker. Um, currently, a guy like Matt Taven, a lot of people just don't like him. I am one of them. I just I, there's something about Matt Taven's face that makes me want to like punch it. You know, <laughs> it's just it's just I don't like him. But uh, watching him wrestle, you know, this last couple weeks here on uh, Ring of Honor, when we've been into the the recent shows, um, you know, he's talented at what he does. I mean, he's he's a chicken shit heel and he's good at it and he's you know talented in the ring and i can't i can't say otherwise even though i really don't like him um he, so you he, can have you can have that heat where people just 
you have that look that people just don't like and it's not that they want to see you lose it's just that they don't want to see you and still be talented but in in the case of uh baron corbin he he doesn't have that talent level either it's just everything about him is um i mean it and that's i think part of why people just want him to leave and go away so uh, you, people have heard me say it before the ineffable hateable quality heel yes and that's that's Oh, you have something when you when you have a hateable quality that can't really be defined, but somebody looks at you and they just want to hate you. There's a difference between looking at somebody and hating them and looking at somebody and not wanting to see them. Yeah, exactly. Taven, you you look at and you're like, I hate him. I yep. don't want to see I, 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 I don't like him, but you want to see see him get his ass kicked. Absolutely. You don't want to see him go away. Yep. You want to see him get beat up. Baron Corbin, I want to see go away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, th- that's the difference. Yep. So I, I, it's just, yeah, it's a, it's a real WWE is in a really bad spot. Uh, they've lost, they've lost a lot of the agents and 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 writing talent that has kind of spearheaded some of the bigger things. Uh, there was a report that the uh, lead writer of Raw is out. You know, Dean Malenko was out. Arn yep. was fired. But hey, Dana Warriors got a job in creative, so yeah, they got yeah, that yeah. going for them. Yep. And hey, you know, one thing we didn't even touch on, um, we should briefly touch on probably is uh, the all the guys uh, and ladies in the company who have been asking for releases and uh, can't get them. Um, I mean, you, you look at ninety nine two thousand WCW, and uh, you had Jericho leave. You had Big Show leave. You had Benoit. Uh, Guerrero, um, Linko, Saturn, Raven, Stevie Richards. I mean, you had you had guys jumping ship left and right from the WCW roster going to WWE and ECW. And, I mean, you're at a similar point in the last uh, six months or so here in WWE. A lot of people are asking to get out. And that's well, something I never thought we'd see. And do, Well, WWE, as we've seen, is taken to punishing those people. Uh, especially yeah. Luke Harper, they tacked on an extra six months to his contract from when he was injured. Yep. Uh, uh, Sasha Banks, it looks like there's no resolution there. Yep. One half of and, the revival, um, Dawson, or w- one one of the revival members has two months added to his contract. Wh- whichever one was out injured uh, last yeah. summer, and so, they're gonna yeah. they're gonna keep up with that. It looks like they're gonna keep up with. Uh, anybody who misses any time is uh, going to going to have to pay it at the end of their deal. And if you don't re-sign, you know they're gonna they're gonna make you set the whole term of your deal. Yep, yep. So think long and hard before you do. Yeah. And you know it's it's interesting because I think I think we're gonna see more and more cracks as these contracts come up. You know, I, I think that's what you're seeing from, I think EC3 is playing the game really well. He hasn't said anything. Yeah. Just ride that contract out, set your 60 days and move, move on. I well, mean, I'm sure word, word came out a month or so, or not even a month ago, like just, just around mania, just after mania, when he lost, uh, that, that following Thursday before SmackDown that, uh, WWE wasn't planning on re-signing when his contract came up. So, um, that's good for him. Yeah. That's, that's good for him. Um, Meanwhile, you know, you got someone like you said, Sasha Banks, who's going to have to sit out this contract. You got, uh, you know, and, and that's Dean Ambrose a- got out at the, just the right time. Like the, his contract, he, they were offering him some money. And, so uh, we, we still don't know what's happening with Dean, right? Like, I mean, this could be this could be the greatest work wwe's done in 25 years right like yeah, it could be <laughs> maybe it could be. i i have i, I don't i think have it so is. many doubts um one I of the one of the big the big reasons i doubt that wwe had anything to do with this everybody talks about the production value of the the video uh, he shot and everything um the key is is that they shot at a bar in hollywood california is is the what was the viper pit or viper room it's a famous bar in Hollywood, California. WWE has its own production, um, you know, locations in freaking Connecticut. They have all their own crew there. They have a soundstage there. They could shoot freaking that kind of footage 
in Connecticut, they could just put up a fake wall with like a dice that said 25 and like something sprayed on it. They wouldn't have to go on location to California to do this. There's no, I mean, the, the cost would have been uh, substantially higher to fly the production team out to California or to hire someone in California to shoot it than it would be to shoot it in house. It just doesn't make sense for WC to, or WWE to do it. See, I almost called them WCW. That's how similar things have gotten. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe they just wanted to like shoot with River Phoenix's corpse. Like I don't. I don't know. Like, but um. Yeah. Uh, d- uh, so. So terrible, for those of terrible. you who are a little too young, River Phoenix OD'd in front of the Viper Room, yep. guys. Yeah. So a little dark humor. Man, there. So, uh, so many places people didn't know what the Viper Room was. There were so many, so many like publications and, and videos coming out with like. Yeah, he's gonna fight Randy Orton, and I'm like, what? The Viper Room's a real place, guys. Like, yeah. oh, they they <laughs> they painted that 25 dice because it means that he's gonna be at uh, AEW Double well, or Nothing, and that's dice and 25. I'm like, well, it could mean that still, but guys, like this this sign exists before this vignette was shot. <laughs> like, like it could have been. Now that could be. It could have been strategically chosen. Yes to line up with with double or nothing Absolutely. we don't know but uh, they, it, they, it, it wasn't made specifically you know no, yeah no. so uh yeah i mean we'll see what happens with uh one john moxley as as things move forward also uh as we, we're touching on some little bits of assorted news uh very interesting report you know uh we had the big we had the big cm punk masked run-in uh, some weeks ago, yep. and that was cool. He was helping out, you know, a, you know, trainer, friend, mentor. That was a, you know, help out, help out Ace Steel and whatnot. It was, it was a cool thing for him to do. It was a lot of his guys he came up with are involved in that promotion. So of course he's going to do a run in, and and it'll be you know fun for him, right? Mm-hmm. But you know that's 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 something. Like he's around wrestling again and around wrestling with guys that he likes. So he did an interview last week, he being CM Punk, and the question was posed, would he listen to offers from AEW? And for the first time since he's left WWE, he said, yes, he would listen. Mm-hmm. Uh, not only did he say yes, he would listen. He says he talks to Matt Jackson almost weekly. Yeah, I cannot like. I know there there are a ton of people out there. There are a ton of people out there that really hate CM Punk now. Okay, there are also a ton of people who really love CM Punk yep. out there still. That would be game changing for AEW television if they were able to sign CM Punk. And you know, it's really a a long game to play where, you know, they they were in the same place in Chicago at C2E2. Um, There's been a lot of stories, you know, tied to uh, between Punk and AEW and and people, oh, you know, they've talked or whatever. Um, It's a long game though here. And, if rumor is true and they are going to be doing a um, show in Chicago in September that's going to lead into their television, what better time to bring CM Punk back to the company than at that show in his hometown? I mean, you're you're gonna get you're gonna get the big pop. Uh, it leads directly into their TV. It gives you those two or three shows beforehand that you're doing and the chance to get over other people on your roster who aren't as big of names before you, you, you start bringing in bigger names. So, I mean, if you, if you hold off and I mean, it looks like Marty Skrull's locked into a new ring of honor contract or an extension until fall. So, you know, you bring in guys like if you have guys like punk and, and maybe Marty coming in, in the fall, it gives more TV time or more, you know, pay-per-view time up till that point to your younger newcomers to get, you know, let your fans get acquainted with them, and then has big new names popping up right before your TV. Uh, it, you know, it's a it's a really good strategy. It's something that you you don't see WWE doing a whole lot of. You know, um, and, they, and you're hot shotting a lot, but and you're telling me that you wouldn't want to, and not you, obviously, Bob, but you're like fans would 
they would really say and mean they don't want to see CM Punk and Chris Jericho in a real feud over something, maybe a belt, maybe personal, but you know, not confined to the WWE parameters like New Japan Jericho. A W Jericho. I, I, I just want to see Omega and CM. I, I, I mean, or, that's you uh, know, that's that, that's the honest one. Like, like every everybody wants to see Kenny with everybody. Okay, like yeah, uh, yeah I, but like, could you imagine the pro? It, it, again, given the latitude, I, I would imagine this is. I don't think we're going to get. Uh, I don't think we're going to get PG thirteen. Uh, out of AEW, it doesn't sound like they're gonna go full PG thirteen. But remember, I think it all depends on where uh, Joey Ryan signs. Which uh, apparently he's got a contract and will be leaving the indie scene here within the next month. So please be WWE. <laughs> please be WWE. Uh, I'd like, love, I'd love to see Joey Ryan dick flip Roman Reigns. You know what? That would that would. <laughs> there's a couple guys in WWE. You know what? I'd actually pop for that. Yeah. I can say that. You know what? You you, you could Joey go to WWE. You may be able to make a fan out of me because <laughs> you could you could ruin a couple of people's careers. I'd be okay with that. Seriously though, like I people forget that all that stuff that WCW did from 96 to like you know 98 Mm -hmm. none of that was none of that was pg-13 it was all it was pg but none of it was it wasn't attitude era pg-13 tv-13 or tv-14 or whatever like there was there was a little bit of blood it was very intense uh, but there wasn't a lot of cursing. There wasn't excessive nudity. There wasn't any of the craziness that you had going on in the Attitude Era. And it was still like I went back. It's been a few years now. Uh, Bob, you have I don't I imagine you still have it. You had the complete like you had WCW Monday Nitro, the complete thing. Yeah, like, like all uh, I had, I think, what, nine nine ninety five through like the end and then every pay-per-view yeah um, yeah you you yeah. had you you had no you had you had all of it, it, all of you, it? from okay. the from the fr- and you gave it to me and i watched every single nitro and every single pay-per-view all the way up to and i started watching thunders when I, and but yeah i got into late 99 and it got that's kind of where i tapped out but i watched i rewatched all that a few it's probably been about three years now. I rewatched everything. Uh, and 96, 97 WCW was just fire. It was, and the undercard was just fire. There are matches on some of those pay-per-views that, that are better than main events at, at, big pay-per-views in the WWE today, like opening matches and the cruiserweight championship matches and some of the, I mean, and yeah, like those cards where you go back and look and those, those rosters were really stacked with talent, Mm -hmm. but man, and they were compelling stories. And, you know, I mean, it was, it was, you know, the height of the NWO angle and, and before it had ballooned and bloated and, and the, it was just, I was pleasantly surprised because I, I I wanted to remember it. I was like, God, I hope I don't. I I hope I don't rewatch this, and and I hope I'm not disappointed. And I'm fondly remembering it. And for though that you know, 18 months, it was not a letdown yep. at all. And it was and just amazing. People got to remember now with with that point being made. And being WCW having beaten Raw and you know repeatedly in the ratings um, week after week, it took them a couple years before from from when they finally lost that top rating until they dropped to the to the lows which WWE is currently at. So I mean you're looking at WWE, you know they they've had a couple you know years here which you know have sustained them just because they were. 
you know, at one point had such high ratings. And their ratings have, have been coming down very similar to how, I mean, it wasn't, WCW didn't have, you know, one week they had the top ratings out of the two shows, and then the next week they had, you know, dropped, you know, 80% of their ratings. It was it was a two, two and a half years uh, to get to that low that they were at. Yeah. And WWE's at that point now with their ratings, and, uh, you know, it, it's been declining over the past five. And, you know, it's something where we could see it continue to go down unless something changes. This isn't out of the realm of possibilities. If they keep losing, they've lost yeah. 30% in, like, the last year. Um, if that keeps up, uh, the end of this five-year TV deal with Fox, if they make it through the whole thing, um, you know, they could they could have, you know, beginning under a one uh, in the ratings. I mean, because they're they're at barely yeah. they're they're barely making a two now. If so. they if they if they're at a one rating, they don't make it through that contract. But but yeah, like yeah. I don't know. I I would imagine AEW is going to be PG and and trend towards you know TV thirteen type stuff, but not quite that hard. And if they are going for that realism, uh, punk. Yeah, Punk Jericho with that really edgy Jericho. And, you know, Punk's promos are some of the best we've seen in 20 years. Uh, obviously, Omega, uh, P- Punk, and Hangman Page. I think there's there's a feud waiting waiting to happen there. Punk uh, and Pac. Punk and Pac. Like, uh, and who knows who else may make the move or what, you know... Um, uh, the talent they may develop and what we may see. So, I mean, just the fact that he said he would listen and yeah, he gave the, well, I don't see wrestling in, in the cards right now or in my future. Mm-hmm. The fact that he is willing to entertain an offer is like earth shattering ground shaking movement on his part. Because remember like, two, three years ago, he wouldn't even talk about wrestling anymore. Yep. Like in interviews, he was like, I'm not going to talk about wrestling. I don't want to talk about my wrestling career. And I know, you know, the haters are going to be like, Oh, he failed at MMA. Yes. He failed at MMA. You know what? He had big enough cojones to get in the, get in, get in the cage and try. Ma- like, Mach- Macho man failed at pro baseball. Freaking under half Goldberg failed at pro football. Half the great wrestler, (laughs) half the great wrestlers of all time failed at other stuff before they got into wrestling. It's not a big deal. Like, and, and not even failed. I don't even, unfortunately, man failed at football. (laughs) Yeah. Vince failed epically at football. The, like the thing is, is, is I don't even feel like punk failed at MMA. Uh, I feel like Punk was never set up to succeed at MMA in the be- it, it, to begin with. Uh, I've listened to plenty of people talk about Punk when he was taking these fights and when he got his UFC contract, and they all made great points uh, about what he should have done as opposed to what he's doing. Um, he's you know obviously a, a tough SOB. Uh, he's, he's got a really great work ethic. He's still training MMA all the time. He's he's training jujitsu all the time, mm-hmm. uh, staying in great shape. And and you know what? Like, yeah, he 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 did something that he he felt like he wanted to try. Unfortunately, it was you know uh, I I he didn't really he didn't use a good roadmap for success. Uh, going you know it was. Wrestling fans, it would be like taking, it would be taking like somebody who'd been to six weeks of wrestling school and expecting them to main event mania. Yep, it, it's just not going to happen. It's yeah, it, like it's somebody that knows how to run the ropes and take a flat back bump, and they need to do you know a thirty five minute main event at mania. Mm-hmm. They're just they're, you're, they're not set up for success, and that's what he did in his MMA career is. He just was not set up for success. He wasn't. He didn't come from a, a a amateur wrestling background or a fighting background, and and getting into the game that late with no 
you know, no previous fighting experience, that's a tough thing to overcome. And, you know, he went right to the major leagues. There was no learning curve. He wasn't put in there with people of commensurate skill. And it shows. That's why he lost both his matches badly. Like, I mean, but that's more, you know, these haters and these internet trolls and all these, you know, People online, all these fanboys online, they want to get, oh, punk, oh, ha, ha, he lost. He's a hate. You know what? What are you guys doing? Yep. Not getting, probably not getting into an octagon. You probably never rolled a day in your life or taken a punch a day in your life, right? I mean, some, maybe, maybe, but usually the people hating, they aren't, they aren't the ones who've ever trained in anything because they're hating. Mm-hmm. If you've trained, you understand how hard it is. Like on any level, you're like, geez, it's really hard. Like it's hard to, hard to, hard, yeah. hard work. Lo- it takes a long learning curve. And I mean, if a lot you have to be said tra- about muscle memory as well. I mean, you develop muscle memory a lot easier, yeah. um, in your younger years, which is why even though I am old and out of shape, I can still knock down a three point jump shot, uh, with the best of them, even though I haven't, you know, played com- real competitive basketball in, you know, f- 10 years, you know, and, um, it's yeah, just and, and muscle jiu-jitsu's, memory. And jujitsu is a great example, which is, yep. you know, that's the primary art he's been training is Brazilian jujitsu. You know, it's, it's, a lo- it's primarily muscle memory. Mm-hmm. It's, and, and especially it takes, like if, if you're you know, the fighter, you know, you get hit in the head a couple of times and you're a bit, you know, loopy, you know, then you start relying on muscle memory and, and you rely on some of those like instincts, which he, you know, it didn't have time to develop. Yeah, it's you know? it, it is it is what it is, you know, and and I I love see I love it when when guys can transition and do things. Look at look at what Jack Swagger's doing, Jake Hager's doing. Yep. Like he's won his first two MMA fights, but this is a guy, you know, he's a a elite level collegiate wrestler. Yep. You know, he he was a he was a top level collegiate wrestler. Uh, went into pro wrestling and decided, hey, I'm going to fight some MMA. Same thing, you know. Brock, Brock's a great example of that. Lashley, Lashley, Lashley had a fighting career. You know, people who fought before they got into pro wrestling and then they can kind of slide back and forth. If you have that training, you can do that. But if that initial training wasn't there early, it's much, much harder to do. But yep, yep. look, you know, Punk is, Punk is, he's a, I, you know, whether it ever happens or not, he's a WWE Hall of Famer. He deserves it. He He's, you know, He's a great wrestler, one of the best promos of the last 20 years probably. And and why wouldn't you come back? He's he's been off all this time. Um, you know, he's his age is ticking up, but he hasn't been taking bumps in how many years? Like he's been uh, gone from wrestling five? since yeah. yeah. Like I mean, I mean he's in great shape. Uh I mean and he's I would say and, and you and I talked about this off, off the air. I don't know if there's a bigger draw in pro wrestling right now. It's him and if, if AEW were to sign maybe Undertaker. Mm-hmm. But, you know, obviously that's not going to happen. I don't know if there's another person in the world that could draw like Punk could draw. Yeah, as far as free agents go. Yeah, absolutely. Even, even signed wrestlers. Like I can, can you name, can you really name somebody? There's, there's a handful of guys. I think that if they were to jump ship, there would be immediate attention Mm -hmm. and there'd be a short term draw, but I don't know how well they would draw long term. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, if Cena or Orton or Rollins or AJ, any one of those guys jumped and went to AEW, that would, it would. Becky yep. Charlotte mm-hmm. though those are really like that's kind of it though right like it's it's a half a dozen people yep. and then you start falling down that card a little bit and it becomes less of a big deal and those are all big deals for very specific reasons Brock I guess you know I mean those elite contracts the people that are making huge money Ronda mm-hmm. so I guess maybe there's a you I know mean, what o- Okada you know, Okada jumps to AEW from New Japan I think that's not not as big of a deal. No. Uh, like, uh, let's be honest, Bob. Like, I mean, for uh, for Smarks, it would be, uh, like we'd be going crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I'd be 
cra- but it's not going to be as big of a deal in the American market until it's a big WWE guy doing it. Yeah. And it's got to be and that's why I say like and pu- with Punk saying he's he's never going to do it again, he's never going back to WWE. And then if he shows up in AEW, like I think all eyes are on to see what's happening, see this guy again. Uh, I'd be interested. I'd be interested to see. Uh, I don't know what the rights are. You know, WWE paid Living Color for cult personality rights, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Like, it'd be interesting to see what the the contractual rights for TV use for cult personality is. Well, I mean. The, the simple fix to that um, is you get like you, you call up downstate and um, you, you, you get downstate the rights to do a cover of call to personality and then no, you no, just no. use that because um, if, if downstate re-records it for uh, AEW, uh, there's a different and, and has the rights to do a re-recording then they can put it out and use it so I, I mean I don't know like legally I don't know like again I don't know I if at all possible, if it's mm-hmm. at all possible, I would reach out to Living Color and try to. And if if there's no like exclusivity deal on the WWE side for like television, mm-hmm. I would try to get Cult of Personality because if that hit yep. on t- on pay per view or on TV and Punk comes out, especially in Chicago, it'll be pandemonium. Yeah, it'll just be it'll be next level poppage that we haven't heard in a a long time and it would just create a buzz instantly so i mean again i don't know i'm sure legal would work on that and if if it's possible hopefully they do it but i mean that's all contingent on can you get this guy to sign i I don't know i think i think this is one of those cases where he went and had some fun with his friends that he grew up in the wrestling business with Mm -hmm. and he was around it and it was fun again for a minute and he was like man i i forgot i used to have fun doing it and then and then an mma mag asked him hey are you uh are you are you are you thinking about signing with aew and he's like well, I'll listen, <laughs> like I, I, I think that's the way it went because it just makes, you know, that would make sense because he was so adamantly like, I don't want to talk wrestling. I don't want to be around wrestling. It's done. That part of my well, life I mean, is done. I mean, before, and then you go back and you do it again before doing like, before doing that show. He did uh, C2E2 in Chicago where he uh, hung out at the pro wrestling tees booth with Marty Skrull and then the Bucks came over and hung out and he got to hang out with Kenny. So there was a whole bunch of these guys just kind of hanging out at a convention just a, uh, what, couple months before he did this run in. So I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I, he's been around wrestlers again. And I think maybe, maybe that's the case. Maybe he just, uh, it sparked his interest once again a little bit. But yeah, uh, it, it wasn't the WWE environment yeah. smothering him and he who knows, but we'll I guess we'll find out uh we will uh we'll find out, you know, in the next months and coming months, yep. like maybe, maybe, maybe not. If I mean if yes, yay, if not, no harm, no yeah. foul. We, we, so we have one more WWE thing we need to talk about um in regard to these ratings, which uh something they just announced today, which could be pretty uh bad for WWE. Um an argument a lot of people make in regards to WWE's poor ratings is people don't watch television anymore. Uh, people are streaming this through things like Hulu. Um, well, I mean, if, if, if that is the case, you know, let, let's let's uh, let's give them the benefit of the doubt and say that's the case. Well, Disney just uh, acquired uh, controlling rights of Hulu, and um, Disney is looking to open their own streaming service. And uh, now there's a lot of conjecture about. What's going to happen with Hulu? Is Hulu going to be rolled into this Disney streaming service thing? Is Hulu going to be, you know, are they going to take the um, the property that is Hulu, their servers and things like that, and re uh, and move them over to like you know handle this uh, Disney network and you know can't start canceling out contracts with Hulu? Like, there's a lot of questions of you know the longevity of the Hulu, uh, you know, um, it's way too early app to now. Tell. So, yeah, but I mean, and, and th- that's something WWE is going to have to look at if, uh, you know, they, they lose Hulu. I don't know where where else they're going to get their programming on unless they can work something out with maybe a Netflix. But um, 
historically Netflix hasn't showed a whole lot of interest in uh, in pro wrestling, so it'll be interesting to see where that goes in the coming months as well. Well, it's uh, yeah, a lot, WWE's got a lot of questions to answer. Uh, they their products are are really at a low point. I, I feel like, like I said, this as a collection because of the talent they have and the roster and the amount of time they have to present those to us. We are getting garbage that just doesn't make sense. And there's no compelling. I have at this point, I have no compelling reason to tune in on a weekly basis. Yep. None. I mean, None. and so, uh, money, in the bank coming up against the, you know, series finale Good of luck. game of Thrones. Yeah. I, I'm watching game of Thrones. Yeah. Sorry. So the match I'm most looking forward to is Arya Stark versus the mother of dragons. I don't know about everybody else, but <laughs> well, I mean, like we'll see what happens. Uh, people are really, there's a lot of disappointed people with this season of Game of Thrones, and you know I'm just I'm just along for the ride. Like I think I think a lot of them are people who've read the books and stuff. Mm. I never read the books. I just kind of got into the show, and I'm enjoying the show for what it is. And yep. uh, I I'm a big fan of shows that portray characters and realism, and you know everybody's like I want this and I want that, and I feel like. I feel like they're not getting what they want, so mm-hmm. they're poo-pooing the show. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, life life doesn't always give you what you want. Yep. Good luck with that. I mean, so. if if I if I read a book and took um, programming that was titled after it uh, and decided to make sweeping changes as a 100% negative, I wouldn't have jo- enjoyed things like uh, Marvel Civil War or Infinity War. Uh, so I mean, you gotta you gotta figure um, if people can read those books and enjoy them, and then watch the movies and have something completely different and still really enjoy those, the, the rest of you guys got to get over it, man. Like just enjoy and, what they're giving you. Yeah, just just just. I mean, there's 80 minutes of Game of Thrones left. I'm yep. not I'm not missing my the last 80 minutes of one of the most culturally relevant shows of the last decade to watch a crap Money in the Bank match when I can. <laughs> You know, I can watch it in like 15 minutes on YouTube the day after, right? Yeah. Like, like there. I mean, Money in the Bank's always, well, usually okay. Mm. <laughs> Not always, but it's usually okay just because of the match and exciting spots and things like that. But again, I have no compelling reason to tune in. And so. I mean, it sounds like whoever wins Money in the Bank is going to be pushed down our throats through Mania. Um, I guess the rumor has it Vince has said that hey, uh. Last couple of money in the banks were disappointing as the Pearson who won was unable to win a championship after winning money in the bank. And uh, like Baron Corbin dropped the belt or dropped the money in the bank briefcase. And then uh, friggin' uh, Braun Strowman lo- lost in a hell in a cell match without being pinned or submitting. <laughs> so like, yeah, they, they had that DQ finish or whatever. Uh, yeah. I mean, there, there were some really disappointing money in the bank. So word has it coming out of WB that whoever wins is going to be pushed to the moon, uh, between now and, and mania. And we'll see a, a, a title run and it'll be substantial. And I'm like, well, I'm looking at the list of people in that match. And I'm like, Whoa. I'm like, hopefully I draw, I'll, um, Adrane Sian almost wins because uh, uh, you're not allowed to ooh. call him that anymore. He's just Andrade now. Just Andrade now. Yeah, yeah. he's been just Andrade for a while. I don't care. <laughs> Appar- apparently, Vince is very high on him because his English is getting better. Oh, True God. report. I'm I'm assuming because he actually married uh, Charlotte because uh, people were pointing out this week they, that they, Charlotte's they, got a, a gold band on her, her left left ring finger, uh, and I'm like, oh well, girl, that's <laughs> quick. Like they've been they won't that, like they they won't they've been dating less than a year. Yeah, well, you like, see, see WWE's yeah. come out and and acknowledge the Becky Lynch and yeah. uh, Seth Rollins relationship S- too. So Seth Seth had a great post. I don't know if you saw yes. it, like. Like, well, Becky had that whole exchange about like something it was had the exchange. It was like, hold on, let me a- let me ask my man and then tag Seth. Mm-hmm. And then and then Seth posted a picture of them kissing backstage. And he's like, 
well, I guess it's okay to post <laughs> this now. I was like, that Seth wins the Twitter war. Yeah. Like, that's pretty great. So, you know, that's cool, whatever. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying it's bad that Charlotte and Andrade are dating, but mm-hmm. like, like if they got married, that seems a little quick. All I know like, is I don't want to see any of this shit in her like storylines. Leave it, leave it out of the programming. Just oh, I don't know. Like I, I'd be okay with I'd be okay with Becky and 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 Seth being a power couple for like six months, and then her turning heel on him and costing him the title. It just be okay reminds me that. of the McMahon Helmsley thing all over again. No, now, I like, I wouldn't but, mind seeing uh, seeing Charlotte and um, Selena Vega in a program because of the fact that uh she snaked andrade away like i could i could see that because like, i'm a selena vega fan I don't, so but i don't want it i don't want it to be like the traditional where like becky screws him to go with like his opponent mm-hmm. i want becky to screw him and then cut a promo like i'm the man you were overshadowing me get out of you my you were company. never the man in the relationship yeah that'd yeah be pretty I'm, the, I'm the man you, you, yeah. seth you you were you were getting too big you know too big of an ego and i'm not having it like that's the kind of heel turn i would want like i don't want the cliche like becky like yo low blows him and then makes out with whoever she turned on him with like that's not what i want i want like the the hard turn cost him the title that he comes out the next night and asks why and she, she cuts a promo on him and then like you know just just like kicks him in the balls again and hits him hits him with a couple of moves and and walks out like i'm okay with that like he that that's a great way and then you just end it and just let her be heel becky well like, don't I, get your I, hopes because really it sounds like becky. becky's gonna be face becky through like next year <laughs> well i i'm not saying i'm well it may make her just even more face becky yeah. but you just roll with it i mean i I'd, I'd be okay with seeing that like yeah i don't want the the cliche where she like you know she she turns on him and they, this is my man not no that that's dumb and it's not 1997 um like i, I want her to be strong powerful like fuck you know you're overshadowing me i'm gonna take back my i'm the man you're not the man and i proved it like i'm okay with that <laughs> like that i think that'd be hilarious well, i just but, know it's good that we're not monetized yet because we'd be demonetized in your f-bomb uh whatever <laughs> so like yeah it's it's uh it, it's uh i think there'd be potential there it's not like i the only thing but congrats to them i mean yeah i don't know if charlotte and andrade have gotten married i mean they've been together like a year or whatever but mm-hmm. we all we all know charlotte has not had the best uh best track record in her uh her personal life so like father maybe, like daughter uh, no not like well <laughs> a little but like like no seriously like it, it, i i hope that like things are smooth you you want the wrestlers you know you want the boys and girls to be happy and have Absolutely. a nice private life and things like that and uh, you know hopefully andrade's a good dude hopefully they don't bring out each other's crazy yeah. and they're just very happy together you know so uh god bless yes absolutely <laughs> so, uh, all right yeah. well we've been going for like ever yeah yeah i'm i'm, I'm ready so we'll be back next week we're gonna Break down uh, Starcast. Break down All Ins uh, or AEW's Double, Double or Nothing. nothing. Uh, probably talk a little more news, trash the WWE some more Hit. because it's I, I can't. I don't know. Like when there's actually wrestling on, it's okay, but there's never any wrestling on. Yeah. And uh, anybody who hasn't got a chance yet, get over to Honor Club and watch that Briscoes versus uh, G.O.D. match. It is a separate match on its own on Honor Club uh, because it was part of the TV tapings during Global Wars in Chicago. And it will not be aired on TV. It's an Honor Club exclusive. So if you got access to Honor Club or got a friend who's got access to Honor Club, man, check that out because that was a, a heck of a good match, man. One of the better tag matches. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, we'll throw in uh, McGee versus Heart Talk next week too, uh, talking about great matches that yep. weren't actually that great. Well, but, and, uh, you know, we, we can mention here before we go uh, what a dick Vince McMahon is about doing that special tonight or last night after uh, after Raw when it's going to be like a on stage uh, discussion at Starcast. Like, I mean, uh WWE man, just just doing anything they can to try to try to you know thumb their nose at, at the uh, competition. 
Yeah, yeah, they're not they're not they're not helping their nope. cause and and let's face it, people are gonna pay to see Bret Hart live yeah. still. So and people are gonna we'll, pay yeah. to see that on Fight T V as well. I mean Yeah, you know. true story. Yes. So um yeah, like uh we'll probably talk a little bit about that too, uh, since it's up. I, I haven't I haven't been able to actually uh watch that yet. So I wanna I wanna watch the full match. I mean it's legendary. Uh go watch the shoot interviews there or watch the show, you know, if you've got the network. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, check it out. So, yeah, Bob, uh, as always, uh, help us out. Like, subscribe, stay abreast and attuned to, to tuned into whenever we're posting videos. Get yeah. at us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, comments. I don't know. Super kick some of those buttons. Yeah, you know, no, uh, crossroads that bell. Because uh, you know, then then you'll yeah. know when we got new content up. Because uh, right now it's kind of uh, kind of sporadic. It's a lot of it's based on Travis's ridiculous work schedule. And uh, yeah, we're yeah. gonna once uh, now that AEW looks like it's gonna be fired up. I, I expect uh, we'll have a lot more to talk about. Uh, we'll try to get some more consistent content up. Uh, we're working on some interviews and some cool backstage stuff yeah. uh, with a couple of the local local promotions and things like that. So uh, as that comes available this summer, uh, hopefully we'll have some exciting things going up on the channel to keep everybody busy. Yeah. So, and, uh, Brother Bob. Um, hey, b- before before we, we, uh, we close out completely, I just want to thank Ring of Honor for bringing their show to Grand Rapids. Uh, it was a fantastic time. Uh, a lot of a lot of good responses from everybody who was there. If you were at the Global War show in Grand Rapids and you want them to come back, uh, shoot them an email and let them know how good of a time you had because uh, that's going to get them back here. Is knowing that they have a fan base who wants them back and is willing to spend money again next time they come back. Yeah, they they had a good they had a good turnout. So and it was a good show. So maybe we can get some TVs up here in West Michigan. That'd be that'd be they haven't been up for TVs in a while. So yeah, brother Bob, I think uh, that's about it. Um, let's uh, let's uh, one one winged angel this thing and get hey. out of here. All right, peace out, everyone.